Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrew Stott, I'm the Emperor of Stemeria, and today we're going to be discussing how we're going to be turning Stemeria into a genuine empire. Now, I've touched on this uh, in previous videos, but the Empire of Stemeria was always intended, at least in part, to be a micronation of micronations. And the structure that we've uh, adopted was based on the structures that many ancient civilizations um, themselves used. So you had the, the, the Persian Empire, the Macedonian Empire, the Carthaginian Empire, the Roman Empire. They all had relatively similar systems when it came to empire building in that they would have a quite a, a federalized system um, centrally controlled but nevertheless quite federalized in the sense that you would have province and vassals and uh, you know protectorates and associated states and petty kingdoms and all the rest of it but there was a there was always definitely a, a strong federal element to it and that's the kind of system that we've gone for. That's the kind of structure that we've gone for, where uh, different micronations uh, can get involved within Stemeria as uh, relatively autonomous uh, parts of the empire. And uh, I will get onto that in a minute. But I suppose the question that comes to mind is what kind of empire are we looking to actually build? Obviously, the ancient civilizations that I just mentioned, I mean, a lot of the empire building and the maintenance of that empire required force. It was uh, military conquest and occupation and a lot of times oppression and genocide that held it together. And that's obviously not the sort of empire that we're looking to build. So it begs the question, what kind of empire are we looking to build? And I think probably the closest thing that I can think of when it comes to ancient empires you know, in uh, antiquity is probably the Carthaginian model, in the sense that even though there was obviously wars and genocide and violence and, uh, you know, to hold the whole thing together, it was very much a, a commercial empire. It was a, an empire of enterprise, of trade, and that's the sort of thing that we're striving to do within Stemeria, within the micronational community, is to build almost a trade network, um, but uh, in the in the form, if you like, of an empire. So in practice, this means trying to find micronations that are on the same page as us when it comes to the overall intention, the overall objective of that micronation. Because not all micronations are striving for the same thing. Some are striving to make, uh, you know, political points, some are satire, and uh, others like ours are striving to build a real world community where reducing reliance on and contributions to the macronation that we're a part of through legal and legitimate means is the, the a fundamental part of why we're striving to do what we're doing and engaging in trade with other micronations is a way to uh, achieve that so we're looking for micronations that are lo looking to do the same the issue um, at the moment is that when micronations do have a good or a service that they want to sell or exchange or anything like that, then there is a, there's a lot of barriers in place. The first barrier is actually trying to find another micronation to you actually engage in that sort of um, exchange with, which is quite difficult. 
and the other issue is if if you do find another micronation that is willing to engage in sort of trade with you in some capacity or another it's a question of how does that take place the most obvious example or the most obvious solution rather is to use a macronational fiat currency so the pound the euro the dollar using this to sell um, or buy goods or services from other micronations um, but this sort of eats away at the overall objective of trying to reduce reliance on and contributions to the macronation that we're a part of um, because it's still using their currency system and so a lot of micronations ourselves included are looking to move away from using macronational fiat currency where we can it obviously has to play a big part in our daily lives because it's just the way the world works at the moment but uh, if the intention is to reduce uh, reliance on the macronation that we're a part of, then trying to find ways to reduce the use of the currency of that macronation is a must. And so what do we do? And the, the next solution that a lot of micronations come to will be barter. And barter, for a myriad of reasons, is a very confusing, time-consuming and inefficient methods of engaging in any kind of commerce. Um, I won't go into the bit, you know, the nitty gritty of it, but the long and the short of it is it relies on the coincidence of once, which uh, briefly put means that you need to find someone that has something that you want, but they also need to have something that you also need to have something that they want and you need to meet at the same place and the same time. I mean, it's, it's a very difficult and inefficient way of um, engaging in any kind of commerce or trade and so that's it falls pretty flat on its face quite quickly once you start to get into more complicated um, trading relationships and once more complicated societies and communities start to arise so that's not a very efficient way of engaging in trade and so a lot of micronations what they do is they'll go down the micronational currency route and uh, I have made a video on this before and I have um, uh, highlighted my uh, my opinions on micronational currency before. But the again, without getting into the nitty gritty details, the bottom line is that if you are creating uh, currency out of thin air that has no intrinsic value, no tangible worth, no micronation is going to willingly accept that. If they can just print it off on their own printer at home, why would they trade goods or services for something that they can create out of thin air as well as you, you know, at the push of a button? Um, so this leaves most micronations in a bit of a tricky situation because they want to be able to reduce reliance on and contributions to the UK government or the micronation that they're a part of, um, but they can't because fiat currency, uh, micronational fiat currency and barter are just not viable options. And this is where Stemeria comes in. This is where I believe that Stemeria can be a conduit between other micronations and that we are going to be producing the first uh, of the Stemerian stator coins, pure silver and eventually gold coins. Um, they're supposed to be minted towards the end of this month, the first batch, and we're going to be entering a trial period where we'll be using these coins as a form of sound money. And if anyone knows anything about Stemeria, it's our affinity for sound money. Um, and I think that using this sound money, we will be able to engage in meaningful trading relationships with other micronations, and other micronations will be able to use that money to engage with each other um, in a more, more meaningful way, because the money that they'll be using, the Stemerian Stator, will have intrinsic value. It will be pure silver. And so they will be able to more uh, freely accept that, um, that form of money in return for goods and services. And to the best of my knowledge, this is the first time that a micronation has ever minted silver and then eventually gold coins for the express purpose of building a monetary system based on the use of sound money and with the intention of using that in order to trade with other micronations 
uh, both in the British Isles and hopefully around the world. And this is really quite exciting for me because we are massive proponents of the use of sound money for a myriad of reasons, which I won't get into here. Um, but the the idea that we could be the, the first micronation to potentially pull off such a, a feat uh, when even the macronational uh, governments of the world don't have such a system is uh, is really quite exciting for me. And I hope it benefits Stemaria, I hope it benefits the micronations that form part of Stemaria, and I hope it uh, eventually benefits the wider micronational community, and who knows, even the, you know, the, the wider, <laughs> worldwide community at large in the fullness of time, who's to say? Um, but yeah, that's just a, 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 an aspect of this project, this development, that is uh, very close to my heart, and I have high hopes for it. So if you're a micronational leader that's based in the British Isles or elsewhere in the world, you might be thinking how to find out more or how to get involved um, in this, how to become a part of the Empire of Stemeria and how to start the process of engaging in trade and commerce with other micronations. So the way that we've always been structured is that uh, the Stemeria has always been a very territorial micronation. Big proponents of if you don't have land, then are you a real micronation? That sort of vibe, because obviously we're trying to build a real world community, we're trying to utilize resources, and without private freehold land that you have some authority and control over, it becomes incredibly difficult to justify the, the, the term. And even Stemeria itself, for the longest time, I described it as a conceptual project, um, purely because we didn't have freehold private land which we could utilize. Um, with the incorporation of the Kingdom of Wayward into Stemeria, that's now changed. But, uh, you know, I, I, I dislike the idea of excluding micronations purely because of that. So what, what we used to do is we used to define territory as a province, a protectorate, or an associated state. A province is uh, land that has been purchased by the imperial family and is governed by a member of the imperial family, or Stemerian nobility. A protectorate is land that's been purchased by the imperial family, but it is governed by the highest authority of another micronation. And an associated state is land that's been purchased by the highest authority of another micronation, but that micronation has freely decided to associate with Stemeria, as, you know, to form a part of the empire. Um, but that obviously leaves out micronations which do not have private freehold land. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be introducing a new tier, if you like, where uh, micronations can become observer states. So micronations that uh, meet various other qualifications or criteria, they will be able to become observer states within Stemeria. So they will be able to engage in trade and commerce and be able to receive Stemerian status but they won't form a part of the Empire of Stemeria's territorial empire. So the Kingdom of Wayward is an associated state because it's private freehold land, whereas a micronation that doesn't have uh, any land, but nevertheless wants to become involved in Stemeria, can become an observer state and take part in the activities that an associated, an associated state would uh, also be able to take part in. Now, there's a quite a long list, which I have gone on, uh, which I have mentioned in previous videos and um, comments as to what qualifies uh, a micro, you know, what does a micronation need to do to qualify to become an associate state or an observer state, in this case, um, in Stemeria. Um, so I won't get into that now. If there are any micronations out there that are interested, just feel free to let me know and I will tell you what those are. Um, but some of the uh, parts that I didn't mention was that in order to become an observer state or an associated state or a protectorate, um, it all requires the uh, highest authority of that micronation, be it a, a president or a king or whatever else, to become a citizen of Stemeria through our Patreon campaign. And that is really the only qualifying factor outside of the, you know, the, the more nitty gritty ins and outs of it. So we look at, you know, things like longevity and professionalism and the age of the, you know, leading figures and all the rest of it. 
and uh, there's, there's a long list of things. But becoming a citizen of Stemeria is one of the most fundamental parts of it, um, because it shows that you're committed to the project, you're commit committed to the idea. Um, there are micronations that are disqualified from becoming involved in Stemeria as associated states, as observer states, as protectorates, um, and those are not limited to things like communist micronations, fascist micronations, Nazi micronations. Um, we also in do include uh, empires um, as well, purely because, n not because we have anything fundamentally wrong with the idea of someone setting up, setting up an empire, because we are obviously an empire, um, but that is the point, is that it would be weird for a micronation called, I don't know, the Empire of Hilltopia, um, to become a an observer state or an associated state within the Empire of Stemeria, because it would be a conflicting of uh, there would be a conflict of titles. You know, I would be the Emperor of Stemeria, but there would be another emperor within the Empire of Stemeria, and obviously having another empire within the Empire of Stemeria doesn't make sense. So for that reason, we are also limited. Um, we're preventing uh, empires from becoming observer states or associates or protectorates within the Empire of Stemeria. And, uh, yeah, I, th th there are a few more criteria and qualifications, which, again, I won't go into here, but long and the short of it is, if you are interested in becoming a part of the Empire of Stemeria, and you think you would uh, qualify, feel free to let me know, because I can probably tell you definitively, quite quickly, whether or not you'd be... Um, uh, accepted as a part of the Empire of Stemeria in some capacity. But unless you ask, I can't tell you. Um, so yeah, I think that's about the long and the short of it. So if you enjoyed that video, then please feel free to consider supporting the project by becoming a citizen through our Patreon campaign, the link of which I shall leave in the description below. But otherwise, please feel free to give the video a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll catch you in the next one.